Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we will be going through the Kali Linux Explain. All right, so before I do that, I have a wonderful news. Okay, so the first thing is we actually have the following new changes. All right, that can actually help us do more tutorial for you. So I can go ahead and go into command prompt and I can actually show you the new upgrade that we got so that we can actually put in more systems, more service, more applications so that we can demonstrate how an enterprise network is actually looking like and then how we can do ethical hacking and penetration testing on those test labs environment in which you have like your proxy servers, your directory servers, your application systems and so on and so forth. So we can actually build up a very, very nice lab environment in which we can test all these different kind of exploits, vulnerabilities, and how enterprises could be trying to protect their systems. So we got the AMD 3900 XT. All right, so this is a 12 core. All right, we have 12 core running to actually help us do all this processing as we begin to virtualize even more systems. All right, so that's the good news to start off today's tutorial. Okay, so going back to Kali Linux, right? So the first question is, what is Kali Linux? All right, so Kali Linux is an operating system, all right, very similar to how, for example, you would use your Macintosh, your Windows 10 computer, your Ubuntu, all right, and the list goes on. So this is a Linux distribution, and it is, of course, created and maintained by Offensive Security, and it was previously known as Backtrack. So I was using Backtrack more than a decade ago, more than 10 years ago, and it already had all this wonderful tools, software for us to actually do ethical hacking and penetration testing on, whether you are doing it as a penetration tester or whether you're doing it and learning about how certain software could be run, how we could test certain networks and systems and applications. So this is Kali Linux and ethical hacking penetration testing platform, okay? So of course you can go into the official site, which is Kali.org, okay? So over here, we have the advanced penetration testing distribution, okay? And of course it has all the tutorials, the new updates of all the software and so on. So one of those wonderful places that you go to is to go to the top tab, click under download and click under download Kali Linux. Okay, so over here, the wonderful thing is that we have a lot of different images that you can use to run Kali Linux. Okay, and you have 64 bit, you can torrent them. Okay, or you can also download them. If you're, for example, running different kind of virtualization technology like VMware, VirtualBox, you can just download it straight. And all you got to do is double click on it. And once you have, for example, Oracle VirtualBox or VMware running, you can immediately get Kali Linux up and running in just a few minutes. Okay. So this is a wonderful way for us to actually start using and learning Kali Linux to get more understanding about radical hacking. Okay. So moving back into Kali Linux. So let me log in. Okay, so this is the login page. Let me log in into Kali Linux. And of course, in Kali Linux, I am actually using it all right, as a platform, all right, where I can also, where I'm also teaching a lot of IT professionals in the area of cyber security. All right, I've, I've trained hundreds of IT professionals across the world in terms of using Kali Linux. And of course, you can see all of the different kind of information, like different kind of payloads that I've created as part of all this training. And one of the important places that we look at is actually on the top left corner. So this is the manual of Kali Linux and they have actually broken down all these different software for us. So you have your favorites recently used and so on and so forth. But the more important one here is 01020304 all the way to number 13. Okay, so this are how they have actually categorized some of this software. And before I actually dive deeper into what each of this category does, I also want to share with you a little more about, for example, some of you may be familiar with the cyber attack framework, which was developed by Lockheed Martin. And of course, there's also the MITL attack framework. Okay, so this is a knowledge base about foundation of the development of certain threat models, methodologies in the private sector, in government, in the cybersecurity product and service community. Or right, as you can see over here, so we have the IT attackmiter.org so we can see all of those information as you scroll down 
Okay, you have the different kind of tactics, techniques that the hackers are using. So you have the initial access, execution, persistence, and so on and so forth, all the way to the end. All right, so you can actually see all of those different kind of tactics and techniques. All right, the techniques are listed over here. Okay, so for example, if you want to look at abuse elevation control mechanism, you can just go ahead and click on it, and it will give you more information about the sub techniques. All right, so for example, the sub techniques here, set UID, set GID, bypass UAC. All right, so we have done a couple of those privilege escalation tutorial and it's part of this channel. All right, and then we have super user do, all right, caching and so on. So all this gives us a wonderful way of first understanding about how the cyber attackers do it and two, in terms of the mitigation strategy and activities that we can put in place to protect ourselves and our enterprises against all these cyber threats. Okay, so moving back into Kali Linux, so you can see some sort of similarity. All right, of course, in this case, more from the attacker's point of view. So we have, for example, like information gathering. Okay, so we have information gathering. It's about gathering information of a network, a device, a, a suite of devices within a network, or right, you know, even about an entity which is coming from open source intelligence platforms to help us find out more details before we launch a attack. All right, so you have, for example, here DNS analysis. You have SSL analysis, uh, SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol, and the list goes on. And you have all this common software, and we have covered quite a number of them in terms of helping us list down the number of devices in a network. All right, so this help us understand, for example, how many mobile devices is in the wireless network, how many devices are there in the network, whether they are Macintosh, network attached storage, Windows computers, mobile devices, we can find all of that from here okay and moving on to zero two we have vulnerability analysis okay so this is the part where we are scanning the devices looking out for certain information where we can try to break open certain openings in which we can gain access into the device so i always go back to the very straightforward use case that we do as part of a cyber attack so think of it again like how a robber would go breaking into a house Okay, so what the robbers will do is that they will first gather information about a particular location, about a particular building or a house or a residential area. So they will look at the house, look at the vicinity. Is there any nearby police station? Is there any high walls that we need to climb? What kind of fence are they using? And how many doors does this house have? How many windows do they have on the first floor? So all these are the different information that they are gathering about that particular house, right? Just like how we gather information of a particular network, all right? And then we have to begin scanning for vulnerabilities. So what do I mean by vulnerabilities? We are looking for places that can give us access into the house, okay? So maybe this house does not have a high wall, so we can easily jump through the walls and gain access into the house and maybe in the house there are 10 windows on the first floor and one of the windows is always open in which the the robbers can easily just jump through the window and gain access to the house after which they will begin all right finding out where are the cash the valuables inside the house so of course in the cyber world we are looking for critical data all right, so once we gain access to critical data like financial information, credit card details, personal data, once we gain access to them, right, so that means the hackers have access to those systems, applications, and those key data, all right? And on Zero Tree, we have web application analysis. So we have been doing a lot of web application penetration testing series as well, where we demonstrate how many different of the sites could be vulnerable to different kind of hacks. So we went through and using, of course, open web application security project and looking at some of this electronic commerce site as an example of how hackers could do cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, trying to do SQL injection to gain access into other parts of the sites. All right, so we have actually went through a lot of them. And as you can see over here, right, we have CMS, right, content management system. So we're trying to identify what kind of platform technology that you're running so that we can conduct specific and create specific payloads to go and target against that particular site. 
We have proxy, web crawlers, directory systems. So we even had one tutorial where we could find out where is the login page for the administrators, right? So those were the kind of different tutorials that we were doing previously. And Burp Suite, I know I got a lot of requests about Burp Suite, so I would do a tutorial, okay? A couple of tutorials on this coming soon. All right, so do, do watch out for those tutorials. And we have gone through all this different kind of technology and platforms for us to do analysis of those sites, especially in an automated way. But Burp Suite gives us the option to be more manual, to actually customize our payload and inject them specifically into different input forms. Zero 04 is database assessment. So this is the part where the hackers go directly into the database system to try to extract data. All right, so we have done a number of tutorial on this. And of course, SQL map is one of the most used tool, okay, to actually conduct SQL injection to try to gain access into the database system. And it could help us quickly map out the structure of the database and be able to flag out certain tables with sensitive data, with passwords, and try to even crack, the, crack them open. And we have SQL like database browser, right? So a lot of new modern and web mobile applications actually need somewhere to store some of the data. So a lot of this different data could be stored inside a SQLite file. So we can actually browse them using the SQLite database browser. So we have done a couple of tutorial on mobile application penetration testing too. Password attacks. So password attacks are mainly segregated into two forms. All right, so one is the offline attack and the other one is the online attack. All right, so online attack means that we do a direct attack against the server to try to gain entry into those credentials. And for offline attacks, offline attacks, we are actually targeting, all right, based on the data that we have extracted. So once we have extracted those data, what we will do is we'll try to crack those passwords that we found. All right, so that's the whole idea of password attacks. And we can also look at some of the usage of the software here that's been created, like John, Medusa, WordList that we also have used very, very frequently together with other platforms. Wireless attacks, all right, so you can get yourself a couple of wireless adapters and we can put them into the promiscuous mode and we can start sniffing for data in the network and looking at how data are being transacted in the vicinity in the area. So that's part of wireless attacks. And more than 10 years ago, I was already using Aircrack NG. All right, so this is actually very, very useful in helping us crack certain wireless networks. All right, and we have reverse engineering. All right, so this is the part where we can look into the software and look at the assembly language of how they actually call certain functions and be able to map out how their how their application code could be running logically and then looking at places where we could possibly inject into the into the software to gain access to the system. We have exploitation tools like Metasploit framework that we have done a lot of tutorials on in which we learn about how we can target a specific system and run those payloads with a shell, all right, so that we have a access into the system and looking at the different modules as part of Metasploit framework to run our attack, okay? And we have also looked into social engineering toolkit as a way for us to also target users on the psychological end of the attack, right? So this is how the fraudsters, all the scammers, is to try to trick users into giving up their usernames, passwords, personal data, and so on. All right, then we have sniffing and spoofing. All right, so this is the part where you could possibly set up a fake wireless access point and as people gain access to your fake wireless access point, you could see all those data that are going in and out of the system. Or if you manage to join a network, you could actually run a sniffing, all right, to look at certain data that has been transacted in the environment and be able to view into those payloads. We have post exploitation. So this is the part where you gain access in the system and you may want to crack the password. You may want to gain elevated privileges. So those are the different kind of modules available as part of post exploitation. So we have went through on uh, Mimikatz, PowerSploit, all right, and then we'll try to go through the rest of the other software or even writing those software ourselves. We have forensics. Okay, so this is the part where we have not gone through at all yet as part of the channel, but definitely really exciting topic and domain that we will look deeply into in future tutorials. So do stay tuned for that. Reporting tools. Okay, so if you're a penetration tester at the end of the day, whether you are doing your internal or external 
penetration testing, you definitely need to be able to generate reports to provide them back to the stakeholders and let them be informed of where you detect the vulnerabilities. So again, going back to the earlier analogy about how robbers go after houses. So what we're trying to do here is to be the good guys. All right, so you're scanning the house ahead and you're scanning the doors, the windows, assessing the security posture of the house. And of course, in the cyber world, security posture of the enterprise. And once you look into all these different systems, applications, devices, network equipments, and so on, and then you find out and flag out where are the vulnerabilities, and then you prioritize them because depending on the criticality of those vulnerabilities and how easy and dangerous they are if they are exploited, and then giving a recommendation back to the stakeholders about what they should do in order to contain, all right, and of course, in order to remediate against those vulnerabilities before the hackers do it, okay? And again, social engineering tools, okay, we have Miltago, we have social engineering toolkit, MSF, payload creator, MPC, so again, very, very good ways for us to launch attacks where we could get usernames and passwords. So rather than doing all the technical stuff, why not couple it together with how the hackers could be doing up a fake login page to get usernames or passwords through phishing attacks. Okay, so these are the different components or categories inside Colonix as part of how we can perform ethical hacking and penetration testing. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.